Hi, this is Emily Ross, LPC. Thanks for joining today. Um, all month long, we are talking about depression awareness in honor of Depression Awareness Month. So yesterday we talked about where depression was in the brain. And if you tuned in, you learned pretty quickly that there's so many different schools of thought about that and that we really don't know so much um, about where it is or how to, tr or, or how to fix the the imbalances in like a medical model Western um, type of a way. So before we start, I want to check in about the coping skills that we talked about. When we first got started, I put a couple of episodes on there about foundations for doing this work that we're going to be doing together. We are going to be getting in touch with some emotions that you might not have felt for a long time and uncovering some emotions that you're not used to feeling. And before you do that, I really want you to have a good coping practice in place. So if you haven't watched that segment, please watch it. If you have, I'm going to ask you to check in about how the coping ahead is coming along. I know it's a different concept to try to cope every day. I want to hear about how it's going. If you're having a lot of success with it, encourage somebody. Tell us what we're what you're doing that's working. If you have some barriers or are struggling to get that practice implemented, ask for help and get support from the people around you. Um, or the people in this community really is what I mean. So coping ahead today, I tried something new. I did roller skating. That isn't exactly new, but it's been two decades since I've done it. So my brain felt like it was new. If you saw the videos, you would agree. It looked like it was my first time ever roller skating. So I feel like it hit like a coping skill. Um, so that's what I did new. So tell me what you did new and, and let's keep encouraging each other to implement this coping ahead practice. So, you know, I say I'm an LPC, I'm a licensed professional counselor. And I think people assume because of that, I would start talking about depression in an intellectual sense, like what it is in the brain or or what it is in the mind, if you think of the mind body, um, spirits, spheres, you would expect me to want to talk a lot about the mind. But the truth is, I really like to start with the body because the body is where our feelings are. We don't call them thinkings, we call them feelings, and we call them that because they are a set of sensations in our body. So a lot of the times when people come to me with a dysfunction or a mental health struggle, it's because they have become so detached from the body from the emotions or the feeling of the sensations and so wrapped up in their thinking brain and the scripts they tell, the stories about the feelings have really brought them sideways. Think about it for a minute. A set of sensations in your body, how scary is that? It's really not, even anxiety, like I have a heaviness in my chest and my jaws clenched, my heart rate's elevated. Are any one of those things super scary? No, what's scary is the script I tell myself about, um, I'm gonna die, I'm having a heart attack, or whatever scaring me or making me anxious is this big thing. It's the stories we're telling. So part of what I do in therapy is really reconnect people to their body and get in tune with their body. Another problem that occurs is that when we get detached from our feeling brain or the sensations in our body, we start to um, forget what feeling we're even experiencing. And you cannot release a feeling if you don't know what it is you're feeling. So uh, a lot of what I do is reconnecting people to, to the feelings in their body. And one question people ask a lot is why? Why am I feeling this? Um, and they wanna chase the, I call it chasing the why. We wanna chase the why down to some formative experience, probably in our early childhood where something horrible happened or something hard happened and that's why we feel this depression. And we feel like or think that if we figure out the why, if we unearth the why, the feeling will magically go away but it's not going to because all of that chasing the why, that's the scripts you're running. It's your thinking brain again, the thoughts you're thinking about that feeling. So you don't have to chase the why. It is not necessary, in my opinion, it's not necessary to figure out why I feel afraid of being alone in the house. It doesn't help me to learn why. It, it does help me to lean into the fear and release it. And we'll get to that in a couple of um, later segments. But once you understand what's happening in your body and that your body is where the emotion is housed, you can leverage that using biofeedback. So emotions happen in two different ways or the registering of an emotion happens in two different ways. Either something happens and I become anxious, which is all of those body things that I just mentioned, like the elevated heart rate, the um, 
the ten tension in my jaw, the heaviness in my chest. So if I know that's what anxiety feels like, if I teach my body to calm itself down, the lowering of my heart rate, um, and I breathe deeply and try to release the heaviness in my, in my chest and I, I purposely unclench my jaw. If I do all those things, my body is registering that the anxiety is passing and so my mind will follow and say, oh, okay, we're done being anxious. So once you realize the connection between how the mind and body communicate feelings, you can really leverage it to your benefit and help it help yourself heal using both of those compo components. So let's talk again about Western and Eastern medicine and what they think about where um, depression is in the body and how to treat it. Western medicine is gonna be pretty simple. No matter what we talk about, it's gonna go back to two things. It's gonna go back to verbal therapies and um, psychopharmacology. So they are going to give you medicine and ask you to come talk to me about it. That's really our approach to um, most things in Western medicine. Eastern practices are more focused around mindfulness and movement. So think about that. They tell you to quiet your mind and move your body. See how they lean into how your body naturally works with emotions. So I'm quieting my mind, I'm shutting down those scripts and I'm noticing the sensations in my body through movements. Right. Same, same with yoga. Think of, you can think of some Eastern medicine practices, I, I bet, Tai Chi, that, um, that lend itself to that different type of philosophy. So using a, I tend towards an Eastern approach or a more um, holistic approach to emotions. And I believe that emotions that we don't process in the moment or that we don't recognize, um, we stuff them. And when we do that, different emotions tend towards different organs in our body. So if I grew up and I was not allowed to express sadness or grief, I would stuff that emotion, it's gonna house itself in my lungs. And that's gonna man manifest its way in a, itself in a lot of ways. So it could be asthma or uh, chronic upper respiratory infections. It could be um, any number of things. Uh, COPD later on in life. So as time progresses and you're housing more, more of the emotion, it will become more and more dysfunctional. That organ will become more and more dysfunctional. So, and I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Um, in, in Eastern uh, philosophies, and um, I, I go a lot towards Oriental medicine, in those philosophies, your body will try to tell you, it will try to communicate to you several different ways when a specific organ has a dysfunction. So if you wake up every uh, night between three and five o'clock in the morning, that's your body telling you that your lungs are needed, are heavy, they're, they're full of heat really is how they would say it. There, there's some stuck energy there and to, and to prompt you to release it. And so there's several ways to, to release it and it really depends on which philosophy you adhere to. So I love acupuncture and I, I highly recommend it and that will help un, unstick clogged energy of the chi. We talked about that a little bit before. Um, you can also eat to support your lungs repairing themselves. So there's certain foods that help your lungs heal and so some of them are like blueberries. Coffee is supposed to be good for lungs. There's uh, fatty fishes. I'll put a more comprehensive list over on my Facebook page um, after this airs so that you can have kind of a long list. And when people are newly trying to heal uh, because of a stuck emotion in their, in their body, I always opt to add things, like add a healthy food, add a couple of healthy foods to your to your daily routine. Like, like tomorrow I'll eat a fatty fish, uh, the next day I might have blueberries in the morning. Don't start to just eliminate a bunch from your diet all at once because that can be overwhelming and um, and harder to follow. Eventually, through this um, this series, I hope to help you eliminate some foods in your in your life that really fuel your depression. There's a lot of foods that really can help keep depression stuck in your body, and we'll talk about those too. We're going to get a, a lot a, a more in depth with nutritional psychology because that's really popular right now, and there's a lot of interest in how eating can support your mental health and not just your physical health. So um, so I start with the body because that's where your feelings are and I focus on unsticking emotions that way in support of um, 
helping them in your mind. So if you have any questions, which I hope you do, because that was a lot and it was really quick. If you have questions about it, I want you to put them in the comments and I can expand on some of the concepts that you need some more help with or you want more assistance understanding. And I'm gonna be putting some worksheets on the Facebook page to help you identify where in your body you might have some trapped emotions and um, how to figure that out and listen to your body. And then we'll get into reconnecting to your emotions. If you've been somebody who chronically stuffed their emotions, which I feel like a lot of us are, and you don't remember consciously which emotions feel like what, we'll practice together reconnecting to what those emotions feel like and then how to um, lean into them and lovingly release them. So stay tuned, come back tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe to, um, to Emily Ross LPC and um, 30 Minutes Coping Ahead. You're going to get lots of homework.